few types of hearing losses. Most people could use one or another type of hearing aid. They all have their advantages, they all have their disadvantages. So the, the part about behind the ear versus in the ear, that's going to come down to, again, lifestyle needs. Uh, it's going to come down to dexterity issues. It's going to come down to um, the amount of hearing loss that you have. So there's no clear answer which one is right for most people. Behind the ear, at least some components are outside hanging over the ear. In the ear hearing aids or custom hearing aids are built so that everything is built into the ear bowl and depending on what kinds you get, they have different sizes. So behind the ear style, here are two different ones. There's a hearing aid that sits over your ear that gets connected to a plastic ear mold that gets, gets put in the ear and the sound is directed into the ear canal. Newer versions of that look a little bit smaller. It's got a little thin tube that directs the sound into the ear canal um, that frees up the ear from being not quite as plugged up. But they're also more limited as to the degree of hearing loss that they can serve. So there's different types of hearing loss where the audiologist will say, that's going to work better for you than that model is. For in-the-ear styles, you may have heard of the ITE, that just means in the ear, that typically is the larger one that fills out the whole bowl. Then you have in the canal, ITC, which fills out the opening of the ear canal, is still visible, typically still has a capability of having a control built onto it, whether or not it's a volume control or a push button. Uh, and then you have the completely in the canal hearing aids, which are the CIC hearing aids, which are going to be the smallest that slip all the way down into the ear canal. Again, benefits and drawbacks to all of them, and they're going to be different for you than they are for you. And this is, this is going to come down to figuring out what works best for, for you. Typically, when you go to the smaller hearing aids, batteries are smaller. They won't last as long. You'll have to change them more often. Um, you won't have the controls on them. If cosmetics is an important part for you, um, and it's something that should be talked about, um, the smaller ones may be the perfect hearing aid for you, even though they don't have a control on them. If you're going to wear it and get benefit from it, that's better than having one that you got that may have a volume control on there that you're not wearing because you're not comfortable with it. So that's that. It comes down to that really at the end. Uh, what are you What are you going to do with that hearing aid? So how do you choose? How do you figure out what's right for you? And the most important part of that is the interview process that you have with the clinician. It's a key part to this whole process. Whether or not it's through a conversation, the person sits down with you and says, so tell me about, tell me about your ears, tell me about your hearing loss, uh, and, and finds out what kind of uh, needs you have, or whether or not it's through the questionnaire that you get when you first sit down and you check off and Yes, I have problems when I'm in a restaurant. No, I don't have problems when I'm in the car. Doesn't matter which one you do, probably both in reality. Um, but this process, though, is a really crucial part of discovering what needs you have to improve your hearing and what kind of lifestyle that you have in which those hearing aids need to work. Because if you pick a hearing aid that's not going to do the job for overcoming your needs, you're not going to be satisfied. So the, the important part there, just as much as it's for you to share what your needs are and what your lifestyle is, is for the clinicians to get that information and then say, this is what I would recommend for you. And they're not recommending certain hearing aids just because um, they want to that day. They, they don't wake up and say, I think today I will fit only CIC hearing aids. Their recommendations are going to be based on what you tell them. So sharing that information is very helpful. Um, that requires a level of trust because you are not going to sit down and immediately say everything that where you feel like your, your, your hearing is, is not doing the job right because part of that is still a, a fairly personal matter. Um, you have to accept the fact that your hearing is not working in certain parts, and a 
A lot of people are not doing that. It takes them longer to do it. It's the reality. This is not a judgment. But what happens is that the conversation, the more open it is, the more you can share, the, the better it, the solution is going to be with the hearing aid that's chosen. So one of the parts that you have to find out about with needs is listening situation. What do you do? What do you do with your life? How do you go through life? Do you, are you staying in quiet places? Do you get to noisy places? What do you find are the most difficult situations for your hearing? Anybody? Let's share. Restaurants. Restaurant situations. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Re recitals, activities, crowds, right? You can't control that very well. Absolutely right. Telephone, Telephone situations, yep. A lot of people will tell you, I don't like talking on the telephone anymore because I can't understand the people on the other side. So background noise situations, right? Group situations, conversations in a car because there you've got noise and you've got the problem of having a hard time looking at the other person. Telephone situations, meetings and lectures. If I was talking without the microphone here, that would make a big difference in terms of hearing. Depending also on where you sit in a, in a room with the acoustics will make a big difference. So these are some very common situations where, where people have difficulties. And the challenges are going to be, um, it, it really comes down to three big things, right? Signal to noise ratio, the whole concept, and you'll hear that sometimes, our, our research always looks at signal to noise ratio. Um, all it is is how loud is the speech, compared to how loud the noise is. So in this case, my signal is a whole lot louder than the fan in that little projector, which means the signal to noise ratio is pretty high. Um, background noise will make a difference with that. More background noise, if all of you talk, my signal would not be nearly as loud anymore. Distance is important. Now, having a loudspeaker here does a good job overcoming distance but doesn't do a great job because it's still sound that has to travel to the back of the room and this voice coming from the loudspeaker is not as loud at the back of the room as it is right here. So to overcome distance, you have to figure something else out. The other part is reverberation. In certain rooms, in some situations, sound will bounce ar around the walls and make it harder to hear. And with reverberation, actually, you get a, uh, I'll go into that a little bit later when we talk about FM situations, but there's a critical distance that, that you have to deal with. 